All right, welcome. This is Mr. Munson, Unit 2 Circles. Okay, so uh, today we're going to be looking at Concept 2, which uh, we are going to call 2.2, 2, uh, Chapter 2, Concept 2, Central Angles and Inscribed Angles. So if you look at your student learning map, um, you'll see that um, the Concept 2, which is right down in this area here, I have enlarged here, basically says the things I expect you to be able to do after this lesson and practice, as well as understanding these three vocabulary words, okay, or phrases and ideas. Let's move on. Okay, so the first word on your vocabulary, so if you haven't um, been doing a vocabulary list, you're going to need to get that thing going. Here's uh, central angles, and basically a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So if you take a look at my circle here, uh, B, uh, point B, and I have a P there for some reason, I don't want to, let me get rid of that. So uh, B is the center of the circle. So here I have an angle who, uh, whose vertex is at the center of of a circle. So that's called a central angle. You know, typical way of writing an angle. Let's move on. All right, next up is an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. Okay, so the blue one is on the circle. You see the vertex is down there on the circle. That's an inscribed angle. No big deal. Again, three letters, and uh, we can designate that as an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle. Moving on to the next one. An intercepted arc, the arc cut by an inscribed angle. Okay, so um, by the way, that's that's a very informal definition. There's much more formal. I'm going to keep it at that for this class. Um, so here I have a red uh, inscribed angle, and it cuts the green arc. And when I talk about that, if you think about it, like a, it just goes to those um, those sides of the red angle go out and just cut into the circle and it creates that um, arc AB. So an inscribed um, arc can just be labeled like this. It could be a, um, it can be anything, uh, any size. It could be a, a, an intercepted arc, could be a semicircle, could be a major arc, it doesn't matter, okay? All right, next up, uh, these belong on your formula sheet. Well, I'm gonna start calling it my formula and relationship sheet. And so um, we have a central angle. So uh, this is going to create a, um, a relationship or an equation that relates uh, the angle, the central angle, to the arc that it cuts. Okay? Don't get caught up on the letters and the numbers. It, depending on the problem, I'm going to be using different letters and different numbers. So you want to get, get more into the idea that, for instance, this is uh, the measure of an angle, right? is equal to the measure of some arc that it cuts, okay? So over here at the far right is just an example. Uh, X is going to end up equaling 145. The way I could do this, and you know, these things are going to be a little bit more complicated, is I would write this equation down, and then I'd look at my example and start filling in the information. Well, 145 is the measure of the angle. So I'm going to take 145, and you look in the red box to the right. I took the measure of angle 1 and threw it away and put 145 degrees in that spot. Then I took x, which represents the measure of the arc AB, and I put it in its spot. And lo and behold, I'm done on this one. If there were some 2x's and minus 6's in that, I just simply solved that equation. Let's move on. I want to take a second to just show you something kind of interesting. We're getting ready to talk about a relationship an inscribed angle has with an intercepted arc. So by definition, this inscribed angle cuts an arc up here called AB. And if, if that arc up there, AB, is 46 degrees, then the angle is also 46 degrees. Keep in mind that a circle has 360 degrees to give up. In this particular problem, I'm dedicating 46 to that arc, OK? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply grab this uh, angle and start pulling it down. And you'll see that, well, if I kept the same angle of 46 degrees, um, it won't create, uh, it won't go up and match with that A and B. Even if I extend them, it's just not going to do it. So watch what I have to do to get it to um, turn into uh, an angle, an inscribed angle. That means the vertex is um, on the circle. See what I have to do to the sides in order to make them go back up and meet that angle or those two points A and B.
Okay, so I'm going to have to actually extend them, of course, and bring them up here. Oops. Oh, let me, there we go. And extend it up there. Now, to make this a little bit more, you know, readable, watch what I do. Just I'm going to change some colors of some lines here. Okay, so if you carefully look, my black line uh, represented the original angle that was actually situated up here in the center, and I pulled it down. And so that's how wide that angle was, okay? That original one, that was the central angle. To get um, the blue angle, the, vert the vertex on the circle, I actually had to make it a smaller angle to get it to go up and cut the same angle of 46. So definitely this angle right here, this um, inscribed angle, which um, has to be an angle measure less than 46. I hope that you see that. Let's go back to our formula and our relation sheet so you can see how that's going to play out. Okay, so what we find out is an inscribed angle is half of, um, <laughs> I have a, something wrong here, let me fix it. There we go, much better. So the measure of ABC, the angle ABC, is equal to half of the arc it cuts, AC. Okay, sometimes it might be a major arc. We'd have to have three letters there. Again, I don't want you to focus in on the letters I'm using. I want you to look at the concepts. Basically, an inscribed angle is equal to one half of the arc it cuts. Okay, all right, so that's the basic idea. And then I have an example over here. So I have 2x is the inscribed angle amount. It's equal to, and I'm just taking the pieces and plugging it right into the formula, equal to 1 half, and then the arc is 4x plus 10. So I put it in parentheses, and I'm just going to solve that. You know, I could take uh, multiply both sides by 2, or I could send that through, whatever. Okay? That's algebra. Okay, so what we find out here is when we're dealing with a tangent and a chord, then the, um, the angle, this... Uh, <laughs> This uh, big blob here, this green, uh, this red now, this angle is equal to half of the arc it cuts. So I want you to know, this is what I know, is that in this situation when I have a tangent and a chord, the, the vertex of the angle that we're talking about, its vertex is on the circle. So if you think about it, these two ideas, the one above, the inscribed angle, and the tangent on the chord are really the same idea. So you can basically remember one equation. If the vertex is on the circle, then the angle that the angle is one half of the arc it cuts. Let's take a look at the example to the right. If I was looking for angle one, sorry, I forgot the 135, then I would just simply take the measure of angle one and set it equal to one half 135 degrees, right? It's that simple. So, you know, sometimes these things get a little bit more complicated. They have like 2x minus 6s and stuff, but it's the same form. You just take the pieces, plug it in the formula, solve it like an algebraic equation. Let's move on. Okay, so here's example one dealing with a central angle. I have a circle, I have a central angle, APB, and it's 4x. And then the uh, arc of 92 uh, AB is uh, nine, the arc measure. The measure of arc AB is 92, and so a good question here would be find x. All right, so put me on pause. See if you can set up an equation and solve that. All right, there we have it. So I set up the equation: 4x equals 92. The angle is equal to the arc, and so I just simply solve for the x. Okay, and so these could be a little bit more complicated with a little bit more complicated expressions like, you know, 2x minus 3 and stuff like that. Okay, so there's my answer. Hey, what about this question right here? Find the measure of a p b. Okay, so that's that angle right there. Well, that's not so bad. I just hope you know that I, all I got to do is plug it back in to the problem. So I do, you know, 4 times 23, and I get, what, 190, what, 92 degrees? Well, that's no surprise because the central angle does match the arc. Well, that's a good way of checking to see if you've done your math correctly, right? Plug it back into the angle, see if it matches up. Okay, how about this one? ACB. Now I see three letters. That's telling me it's a major arc. So we're asking for this back side here. How much is this arc here? So put me on pause and see if you can figure this one out. 
All right. So I got uh, 268 degrees. You just got to keep in mind a circle has out on the outer rim there as well as the inside angles has 360 degrees to give up. 92 of it is between A and B. And I'm asking you how much is left over on the other side. So 360 minus 92 equals 268. Let's go on to the next one. All right, here's one. Uh, we're dealing with uh, example number two, an inscribed angle. Okay, no big deal. I'm asking to find angle one. Let's call this angle one here. I'm sorry. Let's find that angle. So go ahead and put me on pause. See if you can write the equation first without any information in it. And uh, and then you put the information into it. Okay. Okay, there we have it. So I basically wrote the concept here. You know, the angle is equal to half the arc. Okay, it's an inscribed angle. I'm going to put that in there, inscribed. You know, just kind of put some notes in there at the beginning. Inscribed angle is half the arc. And so I'm looking for the inscribed angle, so I'm not going to put anything in that place. I'm going to replace the inscribed angle information with the measure of angle one. So listen, if you're... Um, if you're really wanting to get all your points, you're starting to note how I'm writing things. So I'm writing the measure of angle one and things like that. If you're doing it some other way and then I get your work on a test or quiz and it's just not at all close to what we're dealing with, um, you're choosing a different path. And I want you to be on the path with me so that you're getting as many points as possible if that's what you're looking for. Okay, simple problem. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Now, I got to tell you, this is a really a simple problem but I don't say that it's easy, okay? Um, what ends up happening is this problem, when you finally see how it's done, if you don't figure it out on your own, uh, you'll see that it totally makes sense. It's, the thing that made it difficult is there's so many lines going on. So the art of geometry is to get your eyes to start deleting what you don't need. Okay, so they're asking us to find angle one. What would be really nice for us is to know what that arc is. So I'm, that's my little hint. Put me on pause and see if you can figure out how to do this. All right, there you have it. So the measure of the arc AB is 96 degrees. But that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for the angle 1. So let's go ahead and do that one. You can put me on pause. I'm not sure what to do after this, or you can just keep on going if you've already found one. And there you have it. So the measure of angle 1 is 48 degrees. Okay? That should not be a surprise. Since these two inscribed angles cut exactly the same arc. So whatever this arc is, it's half of that. So this is really a simple problem. I could have actually found angle one very quickly just by simply saying it's equal to 48. So keep in mind, uh, inscribed angles that cut the same arc are congruent to each other. That's a relationship. That means I can set those two things equal. So if these had, instead of 48, it had 6x minus 2, and angle 1 had 48 minus 2, or, or uh, 3x minus 1, I could set those two things equal to each other and solve. And I will have some practice with that, so don't worry about that. Okay, how about this problem? This is a tangent and chord problem. And again, I, I like to just look at these as an inscribed angle. It's not an inscribed angle by definition, but it is basically a angle whose vertex is on the circle. And so very similarly done as the previous problem. So it's asking me to find angle one and two. So go about, go ahead and see if you can figure out a way to do that. Put me on pause, check your work, and then uh, come back and see me. All right, there you go. So I actually found the measure of angle two first. Just because they ask me to find these two doesn't mean I have to find them in that order. I found uh, angle two because, hey, the arc that's cut by angle two is right there. And so I just went ahead and set up the equation, solved for it, and I found it to be 108. Hey, listen, if you just simply took 216 and took half of it and didn't write the equation, I want you to know that when that 216 becomes a 6x minus 4, Instead of that, you're not going to have the, the skill of writing these equations and being able to solve for that. So what you want to do is make sure that you're following me and writing down equations. Maybe write the general idea and then fill in the information and all that stuff. And then when it gets a little bit harder, you can follow along and be uh, with us uh, as a champion. All right, let's go find angle one. All right, and there's uh, angle one. So for me, I could have uh, certainly gone and found uh, some other information or whatever. I just simply realized that angle one and angle two are a linear pair. I had angle two is 108 degrees, so I just found angle one using the, um, the idea that those add up to be 108.
Okay, so another question is I could ask you to find the measure of arc CB. Okay, so the quickest way to do that, I think, is just again realize that a whole circle has 360 degrees to give up, and nine and 216 of it is done here. Okay, um, I know that this is 72 degrees, so I could multiply it times two and get 144. Um, I could take 360 and divide or uh, subtracted that 216 from it and uh, gotten that 144. Lots of ways of double checking your answers. Okay, that's it. Let's take a look at your try it problems and make sure that you understand how to do these problems. Listen, no work, no credit. So some of these you're going to say, well, I can do that one in my head. I want you to write the relationship, the equation without any information in it, then write the information. Some of these you can do in your head. You should be able to do them in your head. But most of them are the last, especially the last couple, I need to see the equations without any numbers in it, and then you're solving it. Okay, good luck. Have a fantastic day.